Lucy Korn, the author of African Brew, is joining me in studio. Now, African Brew is the only South African craft beer book in the entire world, so we're very excited to have you here, Lucy. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, we're very excited about this. Like I said, it's the only South African craft beer book in, on the planet. That it is. That is quite uh, As far a as I'm aware, I can't imagine yeah. someone in Mongolia is writing one. <laughs> Pretty sure it's the Can only one. <laughs> That'd be cool. Okay, so you're a beer expert. Uh, sure, why not? How, I, I, <laughs> how do you get this title? I think you just have to drink a lot, you know. No, it's. Um, I'm on my way to being a beer expert. <laughs> then. We're all beer experts. <laughs> um, I, people call me a beer expert. I don't know if I would actually call myself an expert. I'm a I'm a beer enthusiast for sure, okay. and you know I keep reading more about it. And I've just done the um, there's a an exam to be like an accredited judge, be a judge. Like a beer exam? Basically, yeah. Do you Which drink is a, beer Yes, it's a tasting it's exam. best exam ever. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> the, the studying was the most fun, of course, yeah. the cramming especially. <laughs> um, yeah, so a whole group of us did it in Cape Town. There were like 20 of us who all did it. It's an American qualification, so they flew a judge over. What? So This I, sounds like very prestigious, this beer exam. We take beer very, very seriously, oh. me and my friends. You know, it's, it's like not you something, guys. it's not fun. No, it is fun. <laughs> okay, so craft beer is a huge thing in South Africa. I feel like this is, it's a huge and new thing. It's, yeah, I'd say it really took off in the past sort of three years, three and a half years, something like that, maybe four. Um, it's, it is huge at the moment and it's still growing. People keep asking me, do you think it's going to fizzle out anytime soon? And I mean, no. the, when, when we researched African Brew, there were 38 breweries in that book. There were a few more, you know, around and one or two up and coming. Right. Actually quite a lot up and coming. And now there are upwards of 100. No one really has official statistics, yeah. but it's kind of, you know, sort of doubling at least each year sort of thing. So it's, it is huge. Okay, take me through the book. So we have African Brew. Um, you went to, where, how, just take me through what we can expect when we turn to the pages of African Brew. It starts with like background about beer, so the history of beer mm -hmm. worldwide, and then there's a whole chapter on South African, like the history of South African right. beer, which is actually a lot of fun to research. There's not much information out there, so when you finally find it, yes, I've learned something today. The jackpot. <laughs> um, and then basically it's like a journey around the, the breweries that were, when it was written at least, that were all over the country. So we went to, uh, along with Reno, the, the photographer I was working right. with on the book, um, we went to seven of the provinces and, you know, we chatted with the brewers. So it's the story of how the brewers got into brewing and what kind of right. beers they brew, why they call it this, and all, the, all these you know, little quirky mm -hmm. stories. It's got tasting notes, um, you know, because people think that beer's just for, like, chugging and not people for sitting and exactly. sipping. So the idea really was kind of to put beer on the same playing field as wine in South right. Africa. In other countries it is. And I think in South Africa, a lot of people think it's just something you drink lots of on a hot day while you're having a bride. Right. So we've got tasting notes in there. Um, there's a lot of recipes as well that are paired with, with a beer. By some top chefs. Yes, we've got a couple of top chefs in there. Pete Templehoff from the Greenhouse yeah. and um, uh, Pete Goffwood did three or four recipes for us. He's That's a, amazing. A, a huge beer enthusiast. What's your favorite <laughs> recipe in here? Um, the risotto, there's a um, beer and bacon risotto. Oh, wow, that's Bacon, everything divine. with bacon is great. Yeah, so that's and beer. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, can't, you can't really go wrong. That's one of the ones I've done, mm -hmm. I've, I've cooked myself on a regular basis. Okay, so that risotto sounds delicious, but I know that there's some wonderful desserts in the book as well. And who would think to pair beer with dessert? This is one of the things that was great about the recipes that we got really unusual, you know, not just meat and, and sort of chips and stuff. Mm. There's a lot of fish recipes in there and this is fabulous. Um, it's a caramel and dark chocolate fondant from um, Stephen Murray at Society Bistro. Look at the picture of this. That just looks divine. So. And you would, when you look at that picture, you don't think, oh, I want to have a beer with that. But then you look at the beer here. And then you think, I want to have that beer. It's paired with <laughs> a stout and stouts have a lot of coffee flavor that comes through naturally. It's not added. Okay. To it, you know, it's like a, it's naturally from the ingredients, and you wouldn't think it's strange to eat this with a cup of coffee. Mm. So it's kind of a similar thing, just with booze. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you said you travelled seven different provinces yep. to a lot of different breweries. Did anything strange happen while you were doing this? It sounds like quite an adventure, and I don't think I could go through that without something kind of memorable sticking in my mind. The one thing that really always sticks in my mind is actually the, we we went to um, to see a sorghum beer be, being brewed in like the sort of traditional rural way yeah. so it was completely different it's like right in the back of the book because you can't have a book about beer in South Africa without having sorghum beer yeah and um, it was really difficult to try and find somewhere you know with an authentic setting managed to get hold of this guy in Zululand and he ended up he ended up taking us to his 
his family homestead, basically. Wow. Um, the chief wouldn't give or wanted to charge us a lot of money. And so he did it, you know, we paid for the ingredients right. basically and, and the time. So he took us to his mum's house and, you know, she's there with this great big sort of enormous pot and boiling the water over an open fire. And yeah, we just hung out with her for the day and she made us some lunch and we stayed there all day. That's Unfortunately, we couldn't be, because it only takes 24 hours to brew the sorghum beer, not like you know oh, wow, the, the Korean quick. beers. Yeah. So the next day they were going to be very popular because it's very much a sharing thing. Mm. So people come from the, <laughs> the village. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to stick around. Just let us know where people can pick up the book. Should they be interested and follow your adventures? It's quite widely available. Exclusive Books, for example, has it, and on Kalahari.com. You know, it's it's pretty widely available. A lot of the brewers also stock it, so it's kind of nice. What a lot of people have been doing is traveling around with the book and getting all the brewers to oh, sign that's their very pages. Cool. That's so yeah, there's actually quite a few people. I meet them at beer festivals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but it's it's out there. It should be widely available. Great. Well, thank you for coming in and talking to me about all things beer. We I'm very have a beer excited in to hand. share. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Next time we'll have the beer. I'm very excited to share everything I learned from you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.